So there neath the image rests my spaceship, forth to be brought when need shall rise. <clears throat> so he's saying there's going to be a need for his ship in the future. Know ye, O man, that far in the future, invaders shall come from out of the deep. He's not talking about the deep water. He's talking about deep space. Then awake ye who have wisdom. Bring forth my ship and conquer with ease. Deep neath the image lies my secret. Search and find in the pyramid I built. <laughs> this is interesting here. Deep neath the rocks, I buried my spaceship. Waiting the time when man might be free. Let me say this again. <laughs> Deep neath the rocks, I buried my spaceship. Waiting the time when man might be free. He's talking about he buried it underneath the Sphinx. Over the spaceship, erected a marker in the form of a lion, yet like unto a man. That's the great Sphinx. There neath the image rests yet my spaceship, forth to be brought when need shall arise. In other words, when there's a need for this ship, it's there to be brought forth. It's there to be used and taken from underneath the Sphinx. UFOs and the Emerald Tablets. Over the spaceship erected a marker in the form of a lion, yet like unto a man. You see, the great Sphinx, mainstream keeps trying to tell people that it used to be a lion. A lion's head on it. It never had a lion's head on it. It never, ever, ever had a lion's head on it. Not once did it ever have a lion's head on it. The Sphinx's head originally was the head of Thoth the Atlantean. In ancient Sumerian cuneiform tablets, he was called Nigazita. And his father, Ea Enki, said, "Put build the Sphinx and aim it at uh, Leo, because that was a time and era that Thoth had the ability and the right to rule, and put your face on it. So the original face of the great Sphinx was actually Thoth's face. Thoth, the Atlantean priest king, his face was on the Sphinx. At a time when him and his brother continued to have these internal battles, his brother was Marduk. Marduk is in the Bible. Marduk is in the Torah. Marduk is in the Jewish library. He's also known in the uh, uh, Egyptian Book of the Dead, where his name is also Amun-Ra. Marduk and Thoth were brothers having internal battles. Marduk was extremely evil and wanted to really masquerade as a god. He really wanted to be a god, and he forced people to worship him and pray to him and everything else. He was having, because of this, he was going head-to-head -head with Thoth. Ea Enki said, look, Thoth, I tell you what, man, I can't, I, I'm tired of stopping these fights between you guys. You go to the other side of the planet. Go work over there in, uh, in the Americas, in Mesoamerica, and kickstart a new civilization over there. So Thoth took, according to the Sumerian tablets, Africans, the Olmecs, he took the Olmecs with him, and he went over to Teotihuacan long before Christopher Columbus was even born. <laughs> We're talking about thousands of years ago. And he built the Teotihuacan civilization in Mesoamerica, all up through Teotihuacan, down into Tulum and, and Tula, and all the way down into Chichen Itza in the Yucatan Peninsula. And the evidence of this is that the Teotihuacan pyramids are an exact identical copy and orientation of the Great Pyramids at Giza. Even, even the Pyramid of the Sun, which represents the Great Pyramid in Teotihuacan, the base of the pyramid is the exact same dimensions of the pyramid that Thoth built in Egypt. And he says, build it out of the Great Pyramid, so he built the Great Pyramid, it took the same exact blueprint, built the same exact system over there in Teotihuacan. The Pyramid of the Sun is exactly 50% the height of the Great Pyramid at Giza. Also another strange coincidence. And both are built on top of aquifers, and both pyramid systems align with the Orion star system. Okay, so interesting. Pretty interesting stuff. We have evidence here at least in a written form, that people in ancient times 
had information or foreknowledge of spaceships, of an invader coming from deep space, of a need to use a ship that's buried to be able to defend Earth against these invaders, according to this text. This is pretty interesting stuff, pretty deep stuff. We have a being that has a capability of traveling to different planets and watching civilizations rise and fall. You know how long that takes to watch a civilization rise and then fall? To observe many races of men on their worlds, rising to the heights and plumbing to the depths. Pretty interesting, amazing stuff. I'm telling you, this is why this book is so amazing. Because the stuff in here that's being talked about in ancient times is literally mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. By Compendium of the Emerald Tablets by Billy Carson.